Hello Year 5, welcome to your final maths lesson of this half term. Don't get too excited. I hope you enjoy today's tasks. A few notes about today's lesson. If you can print out the resources which are in today's home learning pack, that would be really useful because that's going to make a few ideas and relate a lot easier. If you can't print them out, or you don't have any squared paper at home, you could try drawing a graph with your lined paper and measuring out along the x-axis. Or if you think it's too much, just stick to one idea for today. One idea will be just interpreting data from a line graph. So like we've done the last couple of days, you just need to look at the graph and answer the questions. For few ideas and relate, you are going to be drawing your own line graph, which is why you would need the resource or some squared paper or graph paper if you have any at home and then for extend i've got some sats style statistic questions to challenge you so please do have a go at those if you feel up for it the answers for everything will be at the end of the video so you might need to listen to some of the other tasks um, before you get to the answers Here is your task if you want to begin on one idea today. This line graph shows the height of a sunflower measured over seven weeks. Your task is to answer the four questions about the line graph. Pause the video while you work. For few ideas, you can see at the top that you have been given a table of data. And your task is to plot the line graph for this set of data. Once you've done that, you then answer the questions beneath. When you're plotting the line graph, remember to go along the corridor and up the stairs. Please use the lines accurately and make sure you draw your final line to link all of the data points with a ruler. Pause the video and have a go. For Relate, you have got two sets of data. So think about using different colours to plot each of the lines for each of the different sunflowers. Have a look at the table above, which gives you your data. You could either use the worksheet or if you've printed it out, or you could have a go at drawing your own axes make sure you label your axes and include a title please once you have finished plotting the graph you then use your line graph to answer the questions below pause the video while you work so here we have the first of our three sats style questions i hope that you can see it clearly on the board um, have a look at the line graph and then answer the questions. I'm not going to give you much more than that because the idea is with Extend that you apply your learning. So have a go, read the questions carefully. Pause the video while you work. Extend 2 is about a graph measuring the temperature. Check the Y axis carefully and make sure you are being accurate. Pause the video while you work. This is a really fun one. Your final challenge today will really make you think. We haven't done anything quite like this before. Read it very carefully. Make sure you are answering exactly what the question is asking you to do. There might be multiple steps in these questions. It's not easy, but give it a go. Pause the video while you work. For those of you that had a go at one idea today, here are the answers. Were you correct? If you weren't, don't worry, but can you go back and identify where your mistake was and correct it? Pause the video while you mark. Here are the answers for a few ideas. Now, hopefully on 
the screen, you can see whether yours roughly looks the same. I know it might be difficult to check it absolutely accurately, but as long as your line follows a similar trajectory to the one on the screen, then you have done a good job. Pause the video while you mark. Here are the answers for relate. Hopefully your graph looks similar to this one. If it doesn't, can you work out why? I know it's difficult to make sure you're 100% accurate when you're just looking at the screen, but as long as it follows roughly the lines on the graph here, then you should be okay. Have you got the answers to the questions right as well? If you haven't, don't worry, but can you work out where you went wrong and find your mistake and fix it? Here are the extend answers. Now I will give you a little bit of leeway. If you're not absolutely accurate on these, but you're there or thereabouts, then that's fine because I understand that it is difficult to um, see it on the screen. Now I disagreed slightly with the person's answer here for the first question, which in which year did the population first reach 400,000? Now they've circled in pink where the line first meets 400,000, where there was a data point that met 400,000. And they've said it starts between the start of 1970 and the end of 1970, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's bang, pretty much bang on between 1970 and 1980, which would make the answer 1975. So I hope you all agree with me rather than the person who did this. I've just edited the answer. If you think differently, then please do let me know. Uh, for question two, how much did the population increase from 1950 to 2000? So you can see on the graph that in 1950, this person thinks that it was about 340,000. Again, you might have said slightly higher, you might have said 350,000, but as long as you're in the rough area, then I'm happy with that. And then in 2000, it increased to 500,000. So the difference between those is 160,000. Again, if you've put a slightly different number for 1950, your answer might be different, but hopefully you're not too far off. Finally, what was the population of Cornwall in 2010? So that's in purple. And yeah, I think I agree here. I'd say it's about 530,000. Again, you might have gone 520, 525,000 um, around there. So hopefully you are fairly accurate with your answers. Okay, so at what time was the temperature minus two degrees? Well, they found minus two on the Y axis and found where the line meets that point, which if you look here, yes, I agree. Between eight and nine, there's an interval. So that would be 8.30. So it's just after 8.30. So I would say around 8.40 p.m. Again, if you're a few minutes uh, before or after, then that's fine as long as you're roughly there. How many degrees did the temperature drop from 5 p.m. till 7 p.m.? 5 p.m. it was 2 degrees, 7 p.m. it was minus 1, which has a difference of 3 degrees. And that is positive 3, not negative 3. So your answer should just be 3 degrees. I'm going to be so impressed if you even had a go at this one because it was tricky. So well done if you've had a go and listen carefully to how I talk through the answers. So an advertisement lasts 25 seconds. How much cheaper would it be in the daytime compared to the evening? So at 25 seconds in the daytime, that looks like it would be around 550 pounds. In the evening, it would cost about 1,100 pounds. You can see there that those are in purple. So the difference between those is 550 pounds. The next one was really tricky. So you have got to try and work out how long an advertisement would be if the total cost of when it was shown in the daytime and in the evening was 1,200 pounds. I think the person here has started sensibly and worked out how much it would cost if it were 10 seconds long. So in the daytime, it costs 300 pounds. In the evening, it costs 900 pounds. So add those both together. That 
sorry, in the evening it costs £600. So when you add those together, it makes £900. That's too, that's not enough money. So we know that the advertisement has to be longer than 10 seconds. So then you could have a look at 20 seconds. It was cost £500 in the daytime and £1,000 in the evening. So if you add them together, that's 1500 which is too much money. So if you look halfway between 10 and 20 seconds, which is 15 seconds, it would cost £400 in the daytime, £800 in the evening. Add those together and you get your £1,200, 1200 So the answer is 15 seconds. Well done if you got that because that was a real challenge. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I will see you again after half term.